read a short piece from my forthcoming book, Sometimes the Light. It's a collection of essays, so uh, in the allotted time frame, I'm only going to be able to do a couple pages. This one's called My People Riding the Rails in Coach. And the epigraph is, Everybody Loves the Sound of a Train in the Distance, which is from Paul Simon. Chicago, Union Station. I rolled my cheap thrift store luggage into the overcrowded and intentionally ugly waiting area for the Capital Limited, eastbound, Chicago to D.C. I wondered what was limited about the route, service, style, class, chairs in the boarding area. The lack of empty chairs and the prospect of sitting next to anyone I saw there made leaning against a pillar seem a good option. In 20 or 30 minutes, the train should board. But there were no Amtrak personnel around to answer questions or check tickets. There was no line in front of the gate. At least 100 people were milling around, ready, I guessed, to rush to the door when the call to board was made. The gates were not really gates, but portals, sort of openings in the wide wall. A woman's voice was screaming last call for a train and an another gate over a very bad PA system. She called last call five times and still, some 30 minutes later, people were still rushing through the hole in the wall. I heard a loud thump on the other side of my pillar and when I looked around to see what happened, a man was lying on the floor. He had fallen off the bench as he slept. He sat up confused, way drunk and seemed surprised to find himself on the floor and maybe surprised too that he was in the train station. It was clear that he was not going to ride any trains tonight. While he was on the floor, people's reactions were many and varied. Some laughed, some just said, oh, and when he tried to stand and wobbled around, some said a drunk and turned back to what they were doing, which was mostly just waiting for a train. The man's stuff was scattered around him, had on one side his paper sacks and plastic bags on both sides of him. A woman tried to help him up, but it was so hard for him to rise and gather his stuff that she had to give up. Eventually, the man stood, walked three steps, and fell again. The second fall earned him more laughter, but no help. I had been riding trains for 12 days, and I had lost any interest or sympathy for train people. I went back to leaning on my column and kept it between me and almost everyone else. Drunks fall a lot. We all assumed he was drunk, and chances were very good that he was. But if he was a disheveled man with a serious, serious medical condition that affected his balance, would we have afforded him more sympathy and help? <clears throat> he shuffled past my pillar and it seemed that he was leaving the gate area, but about 10 minutes later, there was another thump as he fell again. He was closer to me now, maybe as punishment for my elitism. He rose again. It was like a prize fight with a very crappy prize. The ref should have stopped it after the third time he fell. It was clear he was in no condition to go on, but there was no ref, no one in his corner either. Why was he here? If he was homeless, then Union Station was certainly a warmer place to crash than on Chicago's streets. But why at the gate? No chairs, nowhere to spread out. There were probably fewer cops around here. The almost absent Amtrak personnel seemed to be in charge of the gate's crowd. He fell again, and this one was bad. He hit his head on one of the poles that hold the ropes that the lines of people snake through. He was bleeding around the mouth. Stay down, I thought, stay down. There's no sense going on with this. Someone will surely stop the fight now that there's blood. The security guy came over to him. Where had he been the first three times the drunk man fell? Security spoke into his secret agent lapel mic and then said to the drunk, How you doing, buddy? Which is security speak for, We are going to get your sorry drunk ass self out of here. The man could not or would not answer. Maybe he did not know how he was doing. Honestly, sadly, I just wanted him out of there too. I was waiting for a train.